Hi YouTube, this is Evie. Welcome back to my channel and today I am continuing my ongoing December video series that is all about how to get involved in the real life BDSM community. I know I've been talking a lot recently about different kinds of events and like terminology and how to interact with people and like etiquette for when you go to these events but how do you actually find them? Now, it used to be that trying to find BDSM events and finding people to do BDSM with was really challenging. You'd have to, like, read through a cryptical, like, newspaper ads, like, the personal section to try and figure out if, like, somebody was into BDSM or not. And you'd have to send them, like, mail back and forth like a couple weeks. And it was just very confusing and convoluted because BDSM was so personal and private. And However, since the start of the internet, things have gotten really, really easy. So the first piece of advice that I would have to give you is just try like keyed internet word searches. So for example, use whatever city you live in or if you live in a smaller place, like whatever the nearest big city is and then like plus whatever it is that you're looking for. I know it seems silly because I'm like explaining how to use Google, but some people don't know, okay? Some people don't have good research skills. So I am lending you my ability to do research because that is basically what I do for a living. Anyways, just Google like, you know, Dallas and Munch or like, like Dallas BDSM party. And you will be surprised at things that come up in these search results because normally you'll get like BDSM pages. Sometimes you'll get conventions and events. Sometimes you'll get like websites for like the local chapter, like a BDSM community. It is just a really great way to find things and find people as a very general overview and trying to figure out what is there. Now, if you live in place, that doesn't have a large BDSM community, you're probably not going to get a lot from these results. And that is why these kind of internet searches are helpful because if you get a lot of hits and a lot of actual relevant hits, you're gonna kind of get the sense that this is a pretty big community and you're gonna have a good idea of what to expect. Whereas if you live in a smaller place and you don't get that many results back, you're gonna know, okay, this is a smaller community, there might not be a lot there. And that's just sort of important to know in general. Now, when you're doing these keyed internet searches, uh, you may find event listing websites and you may find newsletters. Newsletters are not as common as they used to be. They used to be like really popular in the 90s as like a way to get emails about upcoming events and things like that. And they aren't as common these days. Uh, usually what you'll find is, uh, uh, again, event listing websites. So basically what this is, is let's say you live in Portland and it'll be like a Portland kink website. And this is sort of a dedicated conglomerate that maybe is run by a local center or just is just somebody's hobby to make and they compile all of the events that they know are happening onto a calendar normally it's like a google calendar or something like that and it's a combination of all the local munches and sloshes all of the other community events all of the things happening in the local dungeons if there's fetish nights at a bar uh, any sort of um any sort of different fetish balls or swinger parties or uh, conventions or things that might be happening, those are all going to be on these kinds of calendars. Now, how frequently they get updated and how accurate they are is going to vary depending on, you know, how good the website actually is. So I'd recommend cross-referencing these things if you can, if there's another website available. So let's say uh, you're looking on this kink event webpage, right? And it's mentioning this class that's going to happen on a dungeon, like next Saturday. And it says, oh, it's happening at this location. Go and see if they have a website or if it links to that person's website and make sure it's still happening. It hasn't been like postponed or canceled or it was just some sort of inaccurate information about that class that's happening. So always double check if you can. Now, the really, really big one, and the one I'd recommend that I think is the most helpful, and everything that I'm going to talk about in this video, is using FetLife. I think FetLife is just the best thing ever. It is like, FetLife is, FetLife is Facebook for kinky people, is I think the best way to describe it, but like a good Facebook. Like, not to deride Facebook too much, but I just like FetLife a lot more. Now, FetLife is a really great way to find local events, and it's a really great way to meet people, and it's a really great way to interact with the community, but you need to be aware of a few things before you use FetLife. One, if you are a female submissive under the age of 40, you're probably going to get a shit ton of messages, and you are going to get a lot of spam. It's kind of like a dating website that way, like a lot of creepy invasive people will message you, you probably get a lot of unwanted dick pictures, you're probably going to get a lot of just straight up like weird confusing messages from people that don't really make sense and there are ways to sort of mitigate this if you have a profile that doesn't have a lot of uh, friends on it because there's a 
friending system on, on FetLife, you're probably going to get less messages if you decide to just randomly accept friend requests from everybody that tries to send you a friend request. You're going to get a lot of those kinds of spam messages and that can sort of alter your experience of FetLife. I think FetLife is personally a really great way to interact with your kinky people in a setting that allows for private messaging and allows for uh, comments and pictures to be shared in a way that doesn't necessarily involve giving away your phone number or your personal Facebook account or any other kind of information that you maybe would otherwise want to keep separate from your kink life. To go more back to the actual topic of this video, it is a really great way to find events. And to do that, you're basically going to want to search like whatever city you're in like let's say you live in seattle you're going to google seattle and then or not google you're going to search seattle you're going to search seattle on fetlife and then there'll be like a couple of different categories you're going to want to go to the event category and then all the events that are listed as being in seattle will pop up now the bad thing about fetlife it is not normally a complete list most places will list their events on FetLife especially if they're bigger events and they're really popular but not all of them will be on there and they don't always get updated very frequently it's also a very good way to see who is going to these parties so let's say you want to go to your first ever munch you would go ahead and you would search for Seattle munch and then you will see that the weekly Wednesday munch at the pizza place is going to pop up and you're going to be able to see how many people are RSVP'd and this is a good way especially if you have anxiety about meeting new people to do one of two things. One, you can evaluate how big this is going to be because if there are five people RSVP'd versus 50, it's going to be a very different atmosphere. And if you have a lot of stress and anxiety about meeting new people, it is a better idea to go to a smaller munch with five people RSVP'd than a really big munch with 50. Also going to let you see through the list of people that have RSVP'd to this event, if there's anybody there that you want to talk to, if you see that none of your friends are going to this event, you may not want to go. However, if you're just new to the scene in general, you can look at that RSVP list instead of seeing if there's any existing friendships and existing friends that you have that are going there. You can instead look at that list as a guide to people that you may see there. So you can look at their profiles and not everybody has a picture of their face on their profile, but it's a good way to match faces to names even before you get to the event and it's also going to give you the opportunity if you're going to say a play party to message people ahead of time if you see in their profile that they're really into like rope and you can message them and be like I'm really interested in doing a rope scene when I go to this play party we, would you be interested in, in talking and getting to know each other more because I've heard that you're really good with rope and it just it it opens up a lot of doors if you use FetLife to find events because it's connected with people's profiles and you can see who else is going there. Once you actually get involved in the real life community, something that's going to be really helpful is word of mouth. This is going to be how you would find most house parties rather than like organized dungeon events. So let's say you are at a play party and for whatever reason you're no longer able to go to that party on Saturday nights. Well, you can figure out through word of mouth through your friends that maybe there's a party that happens at somebody's house on Friday night instead and you can go to that. It is just generally a good way to find events because again, FetLife and these uh, like web listings are not complete because a lot of times there are private parties that you're not going to get invited to unless you know the right people. Which seems a little bit elitist, but it is a way for people to mitigate risk and control who goes to parties. Because a lot of times if you are into BDSM and you're getting involved in the scene, a lot of times dungeons and uh, play parties in general, it's kind of a come one, come all kind of event. And so if you're somebody who has a lot of problems with anxiety and meeting new people in social settings, it can be very overwhelming because these events can get very large. Whereas with house parties, again, kind of depending on who's hosting them and, and what the people are like in general, it tends to be a smaller, more intimate event. And that can be a lot more comfortable for people who, again, have problems with anxiety and have problems meeting new people. Now, finally, there is one last thing which I personally have not had a lot of success with, but that depending on where you live, like you can live in like Vancouver in Canada or you live in New York or a really big city, uh, may be helpful for you, and that is nightclub advertisements. If you live in a big city, I'm going to say especially in Europe because I know that a lot of BDSM clubs overlap with nightclubs, this is a really great way to find events because a lot of them have fetish nights. It's going to depend on the kind of club that it is. Obviously, not all clubs have fetish nights. That would just be ridiculous, even if it would be totally awesome if that were true. But 
It can be a really great way to uh, find events if you live in the type of area that doesn't have organized dungeons and that doesn't have a lot of house parties. Nightclubs may be the way to go for you, and if you live in a big city, you likely have nightclub advertisements plastered everywhere. If you have a nightclub that you think maybe hosts a fetish night, just go to the nightclub's website. They'll probably have it listed on there. If you think that maybe they have a fetish night and you haven't seen it advertised, you can always just email them or give them a phone call or just like ask your bartender the next time you're there, like, hey, do you guys have ever have fetish events here? It may seem kind of weird to ask that, but Depending on the kind of bar that it is, if it is the kind of place that would host a fetish event, they're probably not going to be weirded out by that question. Overall, I would really recommend FetLife as like the go-to for meeting people if you're new to the community. I have met so many friends and play partners and just even I've met a dominant through there that I had for like a year and a half. Like it is a really great way to meet people in general and I think it is a very like safe way to meet people because you can block people and if you have anxiety it's a really great way to introduce yourself and and message people without actually having to go through the stress of like going to a party alone so I would highly highly recommend it but besides that that is really all I have to say on this particular topic as always if you have any questions or comments please feel free to leave that down below I am always happy to answer anything that you may have problems with if I can if you did like this video and you find it helpful please give it a thumbs up it really does help and as always until i see you next time i hope you have a great rest of your day and a great rest of your week Bye bye